Hi, I'm Matt, and welcome to CData Arc. This video is an introduction to using the application, so I'll get you familiar with the main parts of Arc. Let's get started. These top-level tabs are the main pages within Arc, so we'll go through a few of them here. We'll start with the status page, since this is what you'll see as soon as you log into the application. This screen provides helpful metrics regarding the application's usage, like the volume of files processed, the number of license connectors, and so on. It also shows an overview of the logs generated by the application and calls out any errors that might have occurred during processing. So the status page provides an at-a-glance understanding of Arc's operation, but it's probably not the page you're most interested in if you're just getting started. So let's turn our attention now to the Flows page. The Flows page provides a canvas and a set of tools called connectors that you can use to build custom data flows. Each connector performs a single task, like sending or receiving a file, translating EDI, transforming data, or integrating with your backend. Dragging a connector into the canvas creates an instance of that kind of connector, and each connector is configured through its settings panel. You can also configure automation and check the connector's input and output. Data flows typically involve more than one connector, so I'll add another one here to the canvas. You can establish a logical data flow by dragging the blue flow arrow from one connector to another. These arrows mean that after a connector has finished processing or receiving data, it will pass that data along to the next step in the flow. You can configure multiple flows in the same canvas, or you can separate flows using workspaces. Each workspace functions as a separate canvas for organizing your flows. So this flows canvas is where most of the magic happens in CData Arc. However, not all configurable settings are found within this page. So let's move on to the profiles page, which is necessary for many MFT, or managed file transfer, use cases. In the profiles page, there's a tab for each relevant MFT protocol. Within these tabs, you can configure the settings that identify you as an MFT entity. Using AS2 as an example protocol, this involves your AS2 identifier, the digital certificates that you use for AS2, your URL, and so on. Notice that the Profiles page is for configuring details about you during an MFT exchange, while details about your trading partner would be configured in the connectors of the Flows page. The last page we'll talk about here is the Settings page. This is where you configure settings that are application-wide, meaning not restricted to a particular connector or flow, but also aren't related to your MFT profiles. Briefly, here are each of the tabs in this page. The Users tab contains the list of users that can log into Arc and their roles. The roles are Admin, Standard, or Support. Admins can do anything, Standard can manipulate the Flows page, and Support is a read-only role. Next, the Certificates tab contains all of the digital certificates in use across the entire application. Next, the Alerts tab is used to configure email alerts when Arc encounters certain errors. The Admin API tab allows for granting access to the Admin API, which allows you to configure Arc remotely and via scripting by sending these API requests. The Connections tab stores the details for all of the configured connections you have to your backend systems, whether those are databases or SaaS applications. The SSO tab allows for configuring single sign-on using Azure Active Directory. And finally, the Advanced tab covers less common settings like performance tweaks, file cleanup, and proxies. And that covers the core elements of Arc that you're likely to interact with as you get started. Thanks for watching, and as always, you can find more resources at arc.cdata.com.